Hi, this is Todd from TT Bike Fit. We're going to continue our look at uh, some of the positions ridden by the top pros in Kona this year. Taken from our uh, high speed videos we shot out on the Queen K around mile 110. Uh, so what I want to do here was look at um, potentially the fastest cyclist out there when you take out his uh, flat tire. Uh, hard to say whether it be Sebastian or, or Marino. Um, but uh, in any case, um, Sebast Sebastian ended up finishing, and Marino didn't. And um, when you look at the position, it's hard to um, beat um, Sebastian's position from a from a, a number of uh, number of aspects. And I wanted to compare it to uh, Andy Potts's position. And uh, so Sebastian uh, got a two. Uh, sorry, a 434 bike split uh, minus the flat, probably sub 430. And um, whereas with, with pots, you have a um, you know up to 15 minutes slower than that. Uh, run time was very similar. Sebastian was slightly slower, but we're talking 253, uh, 254 run splits. So you know, I think it, it doesn't take um, an experienced eye to see the difference in the positions here. Certainly, Potts is set up far more upright than uh, Sebastian is. You know, basically, you could put his torso angle at dead level versus Potts here at a, a mid-teens. So it's clear that you know using so-called eyeball wind tunnel here that uh, Potts is going to be certainly uh, catching a lot more wind. He's going to have a bigger frontal area. He's a bigger guy to begin with. So, um, But his position, from strictly an aerodynamic standpoint, is not helping him out. The question is, of course, you know, could he get into a position more like Sebastian's and still be able to ride well and more importantly still be able to run well. So just because uh, you know this looks like a great aerodynamic position, I'm sure it is, uh, doesn't mean that every rider can or should adopt it. Uh, it may not end up being the fastest position overall uh, for the race. You need to get off the bike and run well. Uh, certainly Sebastian is capable of doing that from this position. Uh, it's possible that that Potts isn't, and he, you know, this might be the best overall combination of a um, aerodynamic slash powerful slash run off the bike well position for him. But we can see, you know, the difference in the in the frontal area here. You know, assuming the riders were the same size, so there's this portion of the front of. Uh, front of Potts' torso here that the wind is seeing, whereas essentially it's not going to see any of Sebastian's at all. You can also see that, that he's got very little head here up above, very little helmet up above the high point on his back. And so he's essentially got himself all in this, this little tube right here, whereas there's a lot more going on uh, with Potts. There's more head sticking up above the back, etc. So certainly, you know, he's going to be catching, uh, have a larger frontal area, and he probably also doesn't have as good of a coefficient of drag from the standpoint that his shape just isn't as nice and aerodynamic looking. Uh, so he's probably got two aspects of the, uh, the drag force equation here um, working against him, and you know the net difference was about, about 15 minutes minus that flat tire again uh, in the bike split. That's a fairly substantial amount. Now, of course, then you're assuming all other things being equal, power output uh, per uh, watts per kilogram, etc., um, which you know we don't know if that's true, but we do know that that most of these guys are pretty close to each other um, from that standpoint. We can see that you know both, as we we talked about in the prior video, both are riding here you know, pretty steeply. Potts has slid up a bit on his saddle. He's about 80 degrees on the sit bones. Sebastian's a little steeper at about 
about 82 and that's to allow the uh, the proper hip angle to be obtained especially when you're talking about such an aggressive torso angle as this. So one of the things we can do is run an overlay here of these two positions and get a comparison. Of course again riders aren't the same size, scale isn't exactly perfect here but you know, this is very instructive here just to see how these riders are positioned differently. And certainly some of it has to do with the different proportions of their bodies. Potts has it's got the longer arms, he's a bigger guy. But Sebastian is rolled forward a good bit more. He's sitting further forward and relative to his personal proportions he's using a lot more drop on the front end to get himself flat. If we look at them at a different portion of their pedal stroke here, here where their knee is the maximal high point in the pedal stroke. You can see that actually they're very similar angle here of the thigh at the top of the pedal stroke. You can see the foot angles are pretty similar too, but of course the torso angles are very different. So let's look at the overlay here and you know what you notice is that hip angle as defined by difference between the thigh and the torso angles here is much tighter in Sebastian's case. And so that can be certainly a limiting factor. You need to have the range of motion and ability to generate power uh, through such a tight hip angle at the top of the pedal stroke. Otherwise you're going to lose some power, perhaps a lot of power. So that's why you can't just absolutely slam yourself down as flat as you can get and, and necessarily expect that you're going to be able to ride fast there. Uh, so you know that may be the case with Potts. He may have found out that he just simply isn't very efficient as he uses um, more drop and so it's a it's a situation where you have to weigh you know the the variables here uh, the reduced drag uh, versus any power loss versus how fast you can run off the bike so all three of those are gonna play into the equation to determine how fast you get to the finish line so we don't want to look at any of these things in isolation I wanted to compare it to another rider here, uh, Tim O'Donnell, who rode and ran very close to Potts, had about the same bike split and the same run split. Uh, the difference in the race is being the swim, really. Uh, and you can see that we have another example of you know, a very upright position relative to what you're going to see here with Sebastian. And there's another issue that I, I want to point out. We don't have a perfect don't have as good of a side shot here of, of T.O. as we do of uh, Potts and Sebastian, so it's a little tougher to do, do an overlay, and well, we're going to try to do one anyway. So if we check out the overlay here of these two positions, now the bikes are a slightly different angle. Um, T.O. bikes tilted down about a degree further than Sebastian, so it's, it's not perfect, but it's interesting to see the difference in, you know, the, the relative reach, how Tio is a lot more bunched up. Obviously, he's more upright. He's more on top of his elbows here, and he's basically got, you know, he slid way forward on that saddle uh, and, you know, basically kind of tucked under there with the pelvis and the spine. So you can see the, the much more pronounced spinal flexion there with Tio. Uh, the very vertical spinal takeoff angle resulting in a much more hunched looking position and you know certainly less arrow looking certainly you know, in many ways less way less comfortable looking uh, you can see you know the difference in these angles essentially the the uh, pelvic rotation the spinal takeoff angle The other thing that you know we can look at in Tio's position here 
is his saddle height, his knee angle. So when he's way up here on the on the front of the saddle as he is, and he's riding off of the screen here, riding out of the frame, so we just have to go with what we have. Uh, his saddle is extremely low. Now we're looking from behind, so this this isn't a perfect angle measure, but but this is a very uh, flexed knee at um, maximal maximal extension here. This is you know way way more bent, so to speak, than we typically want to see it. I can't really even get that one down the center. I could e estimate it. So his saddle may have been set at the proper height when he is sitting back in the so-called you know normal position. But when he works himself up on the nose here, it's extremely low. Extremely low. So you, you have to wonder, you know, whether whether this pulled forward position, uh, you know, certainly that exacerbates the low saddle. So uh, it's it's you know you have to wonder how this position results from a combination of these factors. And if we look at his thigh angle at the top of the pedal stroke. You know, it's, it's in the same range, uh, mid-twenties. Even at this very low saddle height. Uh, if he was back here, certainly this would be a lot flatter and it would be tighter still. So, you know, again, you, you have you have to look at this position and say, well, gosh, you know, he doesn't look very aero. He doesn't necessarily look very comfortable. But the fact may be that this type of position is simply not achievable for this rider. And, and it could be due to range of motion here. Essentially, what is the hip angle that he can obtain uh, comfortably and still generate power? And we often do see that with more pure runner types, uh, a more upright pelvic position like this, and a position more similar to TOs here than Sebastian's. And so, you know, some of the uh, really top-notch runners we've worked with uh, will exhibit a position like this, and there's really not much the rider can do about it. You see a pretty close to a 90 degree angle here if you look at the pelvic position versus the thigh position at the top of the pedal stroke, whereas it's much tighter on a rider like Sebastian. So you know, once again, you can look at this position and say, doesn't look that arrow, doesn't look that comfortable, uh, let's change it, but this may be the most efficient position that uh, T.O. can achieve, although I would say that I would be looking at the saddle height adjustment because you see very few riders riding with that much of a knee bend at the bottom of the pedal stroke. So just some interesting things to look at there. Um, very easy to see the efficiency and beauty of this position and you know compare it to others that, that don't look as much as nice or as good or as fast but has to be taken into account with all the variables and who gets to the finish line the fastest. Next video we'll take a look at um, some of the women's positions.